What a beautiful day to play Rise of Kingdoms. Huh? The moment I realized top 10 in arms training was at risk, there was only one thing to do. Secure it, no matter what. But how? Because we already did everything we could, and this was the highest point that we managed to reach. We had to think and consider every single possibility, every bit of extra boost that we can receive to take our spot back. Because the reward difference between rank 10 and rank 11 was massive. 8 legendary commander sculptures versus 20 epic sculptures. So I started making a list. What are those possibilities? How can we deal more damage or take less damage from Lohar to rank higher? The first thing that came to my mind was City Hall 25. We were still at CH24 and upgrading it to 25 would give us extra 20k troop capacity. But since we were going to use 50% army expansion, Effectively, this upgrade would give us 30k extra troops and it would be the perfect boost for us because the problem was even though we had a lot of speed ups, we didn't have the resources for it. Because for City Hall 25, I needed to upgrade my wall and trading post to level 24. Not to mention that upgrading your trading post also requires you to upgrade your gold mine. So CH25 was going to take a ton of resources and we just didn't have it. Option 1 eliminated. The next thing I could think of was upgrading our VIP level because VIP 11 provides extra 5% troop attack and it is the perfect stat for us because our whole goal is to kill Lohar as fast as we can and for that we needed attack. Lots of it. We were only 5k away from VIP 11. Was it worth it for me to spend 5000 gems right now? No, I didn't need to because luckily we just reached Lucian's Cruise level 10 to get the exact amount of VIP we needed to reach level 11. We got the 5k VIP, we used it, and boom, extra 5% troop attack. But of course it wasn't going to be enough for us to secure top 10. So we needed more buffs before we fight against Lohar for one last time. And that takes us to option number 3, gold chests. I was saving my gold keys for quite a while because I wanted to unlock open 200 gold keys at once achievement. More than 180 keys saved and we were only a few gold keys away to unlock the achievement. So should I really use those keys that I've saved for weeks without even getting the achievement? I just had to. But what we were looking for from those chests is probably not what you are expecting. Even though my main march against Lohar was Mina double C, I actually wasn't after Kaokao sculptures because realistically it is not possible for me to get enough sculptures to upgrade one of his skills with the keys that I had. And even if we did, most of his skills are useless in this event. In arms training, Lohar does not count as a barbarian and you cannot heal while fighting him. So this was his only useful skill that I could upgrade and chances for that to happen was only 33.3%. So I was trying to get sculptures for someone else. Good old Joan of Arc. Yes, I was buffing my Mina with Joan's AoE while fighting against Lohar. If somehow we could max her first skill, our cavalry defense buff would become 30% instead of 15 and rage game per second would go up to 40 instead of 20. So I had to tavern and used every single gold key I had. Unfortunately, we failed because we couldn't get enough sculptures for Joan of Arc to max her first skill. We only got enough to upgrade her first skill only for once. Was this going to be enough for us to secure our legendary commander sculptures? Next thing to do was upgrading our technology. Yes, it is not worth to speed up your tech just for this event, but we also had Zenith of Power and I was still trying to reach 1 million points to get my 5 legendary sculptures. So I decided to vent for it, grab the research rune, ask for the scientist title and started researching. After a few hours, we had more HP, more defense and attack. But there was one last thing to do before the battle. Equipment. Since we were already in pre-KVK, I was going to craft the best possible equipment for my Mina anyways. I just decided to do it sooner. However, I wasn't sure what to craft. Vanguard said both Special Talented was providing us 25% of stats, so even if we craft Heart of the Saint and the Gladiator, we would have the exact same stats if we couldn't get a Special Talent on either of those, 21% again, so it was super risky. We had the blueprint for Epic Helm, but without a Special Talent, is it actually even better than the Blue Helm? Against Lohar, yes, because attack is great, but for KVK, I was surely going to use our Blue Helm because it provides defense. So still, not sure what to craft. The most obvious weakling on our gear was the boots, but unfortunately, we didn't have the blueprint to craft it, so we had to get it from our crystal key. We only got two epic blueprints and both were revival helms, but one thing we could do 
was refining the windswept boots. We tried it twice and we failed again. Things were not looking good and I said whatever, I'm just gonna craft our epic helm. Even if I don't get a special talent on it, I would at least have more attack. I went for it, no special talent again, another fail. But regardless of our equipment, now we were looking much better than day one. We were ready to battle Lohar one last time. We grabbed the rune, got the justice title, had to apply 5% attack boost because I just didn't have a 10% one. We scouted a city for war frenzy, poured to our alliance territory that is filled with barbarians, and we started the event. Minamoto Double C was ready to fight Lohar, and our own Lohar with Joan was ready to fight barbarians and buff our main march. The reason I selected Lohar as a primary to my Joan was to just reduce the action point cost when attacking barbarians since Lohar is a peacekeeping commander. And you might be wondering why I was pulling out random marches on the field. The goal was to maximize summoning Lohar on the right side of my city by filling the left side with my own marches because most of the barbarians was on the right side and I needed to fight close to barbarians to be able to buff my Mina with Jones AoE. The first skill we activated was Ancestral Protection because it was conditional, only 10% chance to happen and damage factor was only 800. First run started and it was pretty good. We didn't lose a lot of troops and now it is time for the second skill activation. For this one, we went for Thrill of Battle. It was again conditional, Lohar needed to survive at least 10 seconds for this skill to work and we were killing him pretty fast in the early stages. And even if it triggered once, it needed another 10 seconds to trigger again. So I was very confident with my skill selection. And we were right. Lohar wasn't even able to activate his skill for once, so we were safe. After this round, things got heated. Third skill, Will of Battle. This healing skill would only work 10 seconds after Lohar is below 50%. So as long as we can kill him in less than 10 seconds, once he's below 50%, this skill was useless for him. But we were very unlucky. Lohar kept activating his healing every time in the very last second. I was extremely frustrated because Minamoto's additional damage was not popping off enough and that's why Lohar was able to heal himself every single turn. Round 3 was finished, we moved to the next skill and I need my Minamoto to step up. I went for no retreat because again, this skill was only working when Lohar is below 50% so for the half of the battle, it was useless. However, no retreat turned out to be better than I remembered and we started losing bunch of troops after activating this one because Lohar became really strong once he was below 50%. After that, I went for Armor of Thrones. Seemed like the best skill to activate. We were already at yellow and it was getting harder and harder as we progressed. Once round 5 was done, our HP bar was at red. We only had a small amount of troops left, so it was clear as day that we were not going to finish round 6. But still, we had to try our best to maximize the points. I went for Surging Strike. It was pretty much irrelevant because we were almost done. And after a few hits, Mina sat faced, we completed the event and we reached 153k points. Obviously, it was a lot better than our previous score, but I didn't feel like it was a safe spot for top 10 and we still couldn't reach the best chest reward. So, we tried again. And this time, I decided to follow a different skill order. We started with Will of Battle, because in early rounds, I was surely going to kill Lohar in less than 10 seconds after he's below 50%. So it was going to be an irrelevant activation and we could move on to the next round with more HP on us and less on Lohar. We now had more troops at the start of the second round compared to our previous attempt. Next, I went for Thrill of Battle and then Ancestral Protection. Things were looking pretty good so far, we had the chance to beat our previous score and rank even higher. And for the next skill, instead of upgrading Lohar's stats even more once he's below 50% with no retreat, I decided to choose Iron Resolve and still had healthy amount of troops. For round 5, we activated Surgeon Strike and round 6, Malignant Venom. Maybe this was a mistake, I'm still not sure. And if we could manage to beat this Lohar, we could pass 160k points, get a higher rank and on top of that, claim the highest tier chest. But I made a big mistake. I focused too much on the HP bar of Minamoto and I didn't even realize our Lohar killed the barbarian that he was fighting and we were not getting Joan of Arc's buff anymore. A little panic, I immediately targeted the barbarian at the bottom with Lohar. Mina only had a few troops left but so does the enemy Lohar. Even without the buff, Minamoto was able to kill Lohar 
we secured 160k points, only 5k more to go. Final round, even with almost no HP, we dealt a lot of damage to Lohar and at the end, passed 165k mark to claim the final chest and reach rank 4. The point difference was quite large between us and rank 11, so I knew that we secured top 10 and 8 legendary commander sculptures. And just in case I logged in at reset and there it was, we indeed secured our top 10 and got the sculptures. Was it worth it? Hell yeah.